everybody, this is Robin Taylor at Taylor Freelance, and today we're going to answer the question, what is overpenetration? What are they talking about? Overpenetration is what happens when you take a magazine that is too long for the frame that you're going to put it in, and then try to make that work. You can do it if you are really nice to it, but the only thing that's preventing this magazine from going to here is the ejector. So, if you use the wrong size magazine, or your magazines are not set up correctly, the mag will overpenetrate, slap your ejector, and break it off. So this is not a good situation at all. And you need to be able to test your guns. Now, it would be very easy to say, okay, I'm running factory length mags, or I'm running factory length base pads. I don't have this problem. Let me assure you, you have this problem. The, the gun manufacturers make minor modifications to their, to their designs all the time. Anywhere where it's in non-critical dimensions. I'm not talking, they don't make changes to the important functioning parts, but they do make changes to the grip radiuses or the how much flan, flaring is at the bottom of the magwell, etc. And they're just concerned about whether their parts work with their guns. If you're a serious shooter, you are probably running some non some aftermarket parts. So if you have aftermarket base pads, you know, in this case, our aftermarket base beds were designed for the PDP. And I'm not doing this to beat up on the PDP. This is a normal situation across all guns. If you take one of our base beds and you put it in the normal polymer frame PDP, this one belongs to one of our machinists, uh, it bottoms out on the frame like it's supposed to and stops. If you look closely, however, the polymer frame PDP full size and the steel frame PDP steel frames, which are steel frame, which are practically the same gun, aren't. There's a little tiny difference in the way the magazine is beveled at the bottom. So if I take the same mag, base, magwell and base pad combo, put it in this gun, stops just fine. If I put it in the other one, it appears to stop just fine too. The problem is it's stopping on the ejector inside and you can't tell. If you don't check, you could very easily be out there slamming reloads home on your ejector and not on the bottom of the frame and eventually killing your gun. So how do you check for this? Uh, we do what I call the post-it note test. There's probably some more official version, but here at Taylor Freelance, we use the post-it note test all the time. Polymer frame gun, pluses her base pad, everything's cool. Mag goes into place and I take, you, can, you can't see it because you're too far away, but there's actually airspace between the ejector and the magazine. The way I check that, take a post-it note, set the gun on the table, put, the, put a post-it note between the ejector and the magazine, push in on the mag catch and push down. If I can pull the, pull the post-it note out without damaging the post-it note, you're good to go. Contrast that to the steel frame version with a wider, with a more aggressively beveled magwell. Again, nobody's fault, it's just a queer quirk of the manufacturing. I put the magazine in, do the same routine, and now I got problems. I got a ripped post-it note, which is telling me I've got contact. If this is full, if this, not only is the ejector hitting the magazine and when it's over inserting, if I put ammo in there, there's even more contact. And we've heard from people, not with, not with this particular combination, we've heard of people with other guns and other base bed combos that have broken their ejectors off doing that. So yeah, this is a problem that you need to check for even though everything appears to be cool on the outside, doesn't mean it's cool on the inside. One of the glorious exceptions to that is the Glock. Those of you that don't have Glocks don't have this problem because Glock built a stud on the side of their magazines that corresponds with a lug on the inside of the frame to stop the, to stop the magazine from overpenetrating. That's why you never hear about overpenetration in Glocks. You might hear about it in Glock carbines that don't include all of the Glock features. But anyway, you Glock guys get it off easy. Everybody else, you got to check. And that's my tip for today.